Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you an Iceland volcanic geologic update Sunday, February 28th, the last day of February, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. And the news I have to bring to you is sobering. So buckle up. We're looking at an inflationary map of the Reykjavik Peninsula in Iceland, the southwest corner of the continent. And what we're seeing here is massive uplift here in the red zone, down drop in the purple, right on the mid-ocean ridge fault. Now, it's not a transverse fault as they're showing here. It's more of a spreading fault, a rift, but there is transverse activity in Iceland, which causes massive earthquake swarms, which unfortunately we're seeing uh, over the last seven days. And for the last five days, they haven't really... Uh, reduced much. We're, we're talking about a thousand earthquakes, up to 1500 earthquakes per day. Many of them in the upper regions above three magnitude, hundreds above three magnitude. And, and that's leading to uh, all indications that a major eruption is about to happen in Iceland, which we predicted over four years ago. Now the daily update for the 28th of February, we're not going to worry about right now. And we'll get to that in a moment, but let's just see the last update last night on the 27th of February and what they had to say. The largest earthquake in the 24 hours prior to this 24 hours had a magnitude 5.2 at 817 UTC. This earthquake was felt over a wide area in West Iceland. Over the last 48 hours, there have been 95 earthquakes with magnitude 3 mag or greater, showing a lot of displacement. And that information can be found at the link above. And so this has been ongoing for days as of yesterday, and people are really getting scared. They were getting scared because as of yesterday, roads have been cracking in the region. And here's some pictures. And, and the cracking of roads is part of that rift valley activity on the mid-ocean ridge. It's not just transverse. But, and if we come over here to the latest earthquakes near Iceland today in the past 24 hours, and I just refreshed this, so let me do it again for you live. I'm going to refresh it and nothing changes because it's, it's pretty accurate. Uh, we're quite up to date. During the past 24 hours, Iceland was shaken by seven quakes above four magnitude. Now, real quick, let's go over to the USGS. They have two quakes. They have a 4.8 and they have a 4.6. That's it. And let's get back to the official results from Iceland. Seven quakes above four magnitude. 45 quakes above three and four. 45 quakes. Now the USGS shows quakes above 2.5 magnitude. So they're, they're right now they're lacking about 45 quakes on Iceland. Why do you think that is? Well, we'll get to that. So there were seven quakes above four mag, 45 quakes above three mag, 187 quakes between two and three, which they should also be showing. So they're now at 250 quakes under reporting. Yes, the U.S. downgrade service is under reporting 147 quakes in Iceland tonight. There were also 807 quakes below 2 mag, leading to a total of just under 8, nine, no, that's 1,000 quakes. 1,000 quakes in the last 24 hours, hours of powers. Now, here is a map of where all the tiltimeters and seismographs are on Iceland. And those are the orange triangles. These are the sea GPS stations. The fissure swarms where the mid-ocean ridge moves through here and the faulting occurs is in the lighter green. And the main volcanoes that they're worried about are in these circles. And we're talking about Reykjavik and several others here that they don't consider main earthquakes or main volcanoes. If you go over to the search bar, your Google bar or whatever you use, and you just put in Iceland volcanoes, you're going to get seven volcanoes that are in the center of the island here. None of them are going to show you Reykjavik. And that's the one we're worried about. But it's not only that, because the continuing tectonics and the uplift is in this region here, which leads to more volcanoes. So... Here's the magnitude 5.7 in that uplift zone. Here's the down drop zone. Red is up. Here's zero. Purple is down. So you can see here a huge 
opposite effect along that mid-ocean ridge. And that's just in the recent days and weeks. Now let's get to the most recent update that just came out hours ago. The situation in the earthquake swarm on Reykjanes Peninsula in the volcanoes Reykjanes and Kusuvik remains the same. During the last 24 hours, the largest earthquakes have a magnitude of mag 4.7 and a lot of earthquakes with magnitude above 3 mag. No magma movement has been detected so far, but the University of Iceland Earth Sciences Department warned that detection of magma is only limited to the first 5 kilometers of Earth's crust and that magma movement below that may not be detected. Now, unfortunately, these two volcanoes have magma chambers below 10 kilometers. They're around 10 to 15. So these earth, we would not be seeing that, and that's the problem here. It also issued that signs of the magma might be getting lost in all the earthquake activity. This is simply the most earthquake activity they have ever seen on this part of the peninsula, and it could be overriding any other telemetry that they have in the subsurface. Here is an actual excerpt from the Iceland Geologic Department in Icelandic that we have translated for you. And we're going to just read it through. <clears throat> now stick with us through the end of the podcast here. We're going to show you corroborating evidence from a geologist on Iceland that we were just made aware of 72 hours ago that is saying all the things I'm saying more eloquently in Icelandic and I think you'll appreciate it. So watch the whole episode to be completely enlightened and up to speed. In the light of the public discussion these past few days, it is pertinent to point out the following. There is no doubt that the ongoing monitoring of recent events at the Reykjanes Peninsula show no clear evidence of magma movement in the shallowest parts of the crust, i.e. the top five, six kilometers even though we cannot rule out that possibility because the movement associated with the ongoing activity is so large that it may mask such movements, especially if the magma volume is small. In conjunction, it is important to recognize that this geophysical monitoring is focused on and limited to the top brittle part of the crust. Yes, we know that. Accordingly, the monitoring provides, at best, limited information on what might be going on in the middle and lower part of the crust. In relation to this, it's worth pointing out that petrological invest investigations, that's just simply uh, thin sections of rock looked under a microscope, imply that most of the magma that produced the lava flows on the Reykjanes Peninsula come from, yes, yeah, three to five kilometers at greater depths than they're monitoring. This also implies that emplacement of the resident magma in the shallowest parts of the crust take place in relation to shallow intrusions. So they don't know what's going on. But I'll tell you what's going on. The Reykjanes volcano last erupted in 831 during the last grand minima. And the largest eruption prior to that was from 1226 when it erupted at VEI-4. Well, let's just bring it back to 1223. VEI-3 followed by three years later, VEI-4 followed by several years later, VEI-3, and then it slowed down. So it lasted for quite some time, decades, at VEI-3 and 4 <coughs> on the Reykjanes Ridge. And that's where all of the entire city and homes are built, unfortunately, on these lava flows. Now, Kusjevik, in the same exact region, that last erupted in 1340 CE. And that is a more minor eruption, VEI-2 and 1, so we're not really worried about that, and that's after the effect. Now, we're going to be breaking this down for you. Oh, I just erased that. Let me reopen this. Darn it. So the Reykjanes volcano began erupting in earnest back in 1233 and continued through 1231. Now, we're going to come over here and show you what happened there. This was the medieval maximum. It lasted from 1100 to 1250. And as it ended in 1230, well, we know what happened. <laughs> yes. Uh, VEI 3 and 4 eruptions happened from Reykjanes Ridge. And then, as we went into the Wolf Minimum, 1280 to 1350, the Kusjevik uh, vents opened up. So we have two events happening, the Reykjanes and the Khrushchevic happening back 
in the medieval warm, the end of the medieval warm through the wolf minimum, which is exactly what we're living today. The end of the modern maximum into the eddy minimum. The maximum ended in 2008. We're sitting at 2021, which is the exact time period for a 1223 eruption. Yes. So proper prior preparation prevents piss poor performance as Iceland is about to blow. It's my prediction that Reykjanes will open up as a VEI 1 to 2, uh, pick up steam and blast as a VEI 3, 4, will last for a week or two, and then Krushevik will waken up. Now, the only problem with this unfortunate scenario is Reykjavik is right here, and there are hundreds of thousands of people in this region. They will all, all have to be relocated or else live in a volcanic Tefra zone. I mean, it's just a nightmare. This is not a good scenario, and it's, it's scary. And so... But don't take my words for it. Remember when I told you earlier in the podcast that uh, a geologist in Iceland has the same information that I do? Well, we're going to play that video for you now. And I hope you glean insight from the Icelandic perspective, which is much more devastating than anything I've told you. Trust me. Hello and greetings from Iceland. But... Uh... This video is dedicated to those of you who are here mainly because of my geology content. But I suspect that many of you will be interested in what I'm going to say now. And to make it short, Iceland might be moving into very dangerous times due to a huge earthquake activity, more than we have ever seen before. But that is not the worst news. The worst news is that it is next door to the capital of Iceland, Reykjavik. I have spoken about it before, that the Reykjavik Peninsula has been behaving very strangely for the last 14 months. We have seen at least five lava intrusions. No one of them ended up with a volcanic eruption. And the earthquake activity has been huge. We had a 5.6 earthquake near the capital just four months ago. So the scientists believe that the energy release back then, would uh, keep the area relatively stable. The day before yesterday, we got a 5.7, followed off with a 4.6, and around uh, 4,000 uh, aftershocks. And uh, over 60 earthquakes were larger than 0.3, so we have never seen activity of this kind before. And we think that this is just the beginning. The whole peninsula is shaking, everything is on high alert, and what we fear most today is that uh, Reykjavik and the neighboring towns will be hit by earthquake up to 6.5. Earthquakes of that size come every 50 years. We had one in 1921, again in 1968, and the current earthquake swarm is just 5-10 kilometers away from this uh, mountain that is providing those huge earthquakes that can cause uh, major damage in Reykjavik and the greater capital area. And you can see on the map that everything is just going crazy just beside it. But I heard a geologist say today that uh, it is locked in the moment, but under pressure, something could happen just anytime. But the earthquake risk is just uh, half of the story. Five lava intrusions in uh, 14 months are saying that uh, the region is getting ready for volcanic eruption. And if we move back to basics, Reykjavik is not built on an ideal spot. If Reykjavik were to be settled today with the knowledge we have about geology, we would have found another place for it. That's for sure. And that goes for Keflavik Airport as well, the Blue Lagoon, the power plants that are there. And overall, we can say that the Reykjanes Peninsula is the youngest part of Iceland. And it is a part where the Reykjanes Ridge comes ashore. But Iceland is in fact just a Part of this ridge that happens to be above sea level. And the Reykjanes Peninsula is very burnt area. 
Het is dus de layer after layer after layer of lava. Young ground. Still under construction. And the constructions on the Reykjanes Peninsula, they have a behavior pattern. We have 800 years with minor activity like earthquakes and such. But the big events, they come every 800 years or so. And it so happens that it is around 800 years since we had the last major eruption there. And then to the biggest news and the worst news, scientists say that when this region is ready and the eruption starts, it's a period that can last for 200 years. 200 years of drifting plates with earthquakes and very frequent eruptions, very close to Reykjavik, perhaps as little as 20 kilometers. And that is literally so scary position that the Icelandic media isn't covering it uh, as they should, in my opinion, maybe not to scare people or something like that. But I am just repeating what scientists have been saying for the last 20 years, or the Reykjanes Peninsula is due for eruption. So we should not be surprised, but we are surprised. And I did not think that my generation would live through to see the surroundings around our capital be burning every few months. But everything points in that direction now. And many geologists are saying that this is just the beginning. We will have eruptions in the near future. Perhaps not in the next days or weeks, even once. But the Reykjanes Peninsula is building up for volcanic activity. That activity could be partially offshore, but most likely they will occur in the middle of the peninsula with uh, rows of craters that could span like 10 kilometers even longer where the ground opens up like a zipper, spits out the lava, closes up again, takes a break and starts again after a few months. We are very used to earthquakes and all kinds of uh, natural disasters in Iceland. We had to evacuate the whole town in 1973 in Westmania and we did that overnight. But the capital area, that will not be evacuated overnight. There are major traffic problems there and the road infrastructure in the city can't even... Uh, get people to and from work in time. And in worst case scenario, that would be volcanic eruption close to the city with a whole lot of ash or perhaps poisoned gas and the wrong wind direction, that would leave us in grave danger. And the same goes for uh, Keplavik, the towns around uh, Keplavik International Airport. And one of the eruption sites, the possible eruption sites, is just in front of the north-south runway. And it makes it even more serious that about 80% of Icelanders are living in this part of the country. This is the most densely populated area in Iceland. This is the last place where we want to have volcanic eruption. Simple as that. So everything is on high alert now. The Civil Protection Agency has declared uh, official warnings on the whole peninsula and in the capital as well that Blue Lagoon had to close after the 5.7 earthquake for the first time due to earthquakes. It is uh, very close to the epicenter of this uh, events. It's in the middle of a lava field and where lava has flowed, it can flow again. So just to reiterate, uh, Reykjavik has been built <coughs> on the lava fields from the last eruption in 1220 to 1240. And it's looking like, based on historical information, the Reykjavik Peninsula erupts every 800 years, and we are now at a multi-year deficit, and it is though. Those are the sign of the times in Iceland, and we ask you to not be scared, but be prepared for the coming times, as we've been warning you time immemorial since we began the channel. And that's a boom to knowledge. I'll leave you links below to the uh, video you just watched, as well as all the links to all the information I covered in the podcast earlier. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When the mid-ocean ridges are opening up, the world is expanding. And, well, volcanoes, they's be exploding. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, People that share this video, you are the heroes. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge and be safe. We love you. That's boom. Well, to Iceland. <laughs>